we talk about the script in in kind of a linear way, like it's a movie, like it's it's already been shot and you know it's filmed and you're just watching something that's already finished. And really, the only substantial change that we could really say is a significant change in any sense of the word re re regarding perception is a shift of mind. So it's like you're just shifting a perspective on the world. And that shift of mind involves, it's like a shift from a linear perspective to a simultaneous perspective. So when the question is asked, you know, can you change the script, maybe with regard to symptoms, you know, what are described as cancer symptoms or illnesses or whatever, the, if the very presumption is, is that there's this linear world of form, and the question is saying, can you make a change into it? And the Serenity Prayer and the Course in Miracles basically are teaching that, you know, you, you can just change your mind. The Course says you can change your mind about your mind. The Course says you can change the way that you look at the world. But the Course never makes a claim that you can can actually make a, a real substantial change in the world. Like from this symptom to that symptom, this appearance to that appearance. In fact, it, it goes the, completely the other direction. It says, seek not to change the world. Seek rather to change your mind about the world. So, there have been talks about like miracles and symptom removal and so on and so forth. And those seem to be, you know, when Jesus would, would be out and miracles were being extended and shared and the, the dead could, would arise, the, the blind mm -hmm. could see, the lame could walk and everything. Those just seem to be changes in form, but, but they really were all about pointing to the change of mind. In other words, all that was happening around Jesus, or Mary Baker Eddy, was really pointing at the resurrection. Yeah. Not the resurrection of the body, because the body is just an image, it can't really be resurrected. It's the resurrection of the mind, the recognition of, of spirit. And so, whenever you, you believe that it's possible to change form, or even you pray for a change in form, you know, it's still praying for um, a different configuration of, of the script. You know, saying, I want a different version. Mm -hmm. I've called this version a sick version, and now I want a well version. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Song of Prayer, Jesus talks about that. He says, whenever you're, you're praying for effects, and when we talk about the body and symptoms and everything, that is effects. Whenever you're praying for effects, um, you're simply asking for um, the script, something in form, to be repeated in a way that you believe you like, mm -hmm. or in a way that you prefer. Still control. Mm -hmm. And so, really the prayer, of the true prayer of healing is, is one of, help me release everything that I think I think and think I know and come back to that place of not knowing anything about the world. And then, and that's where the Spirit can, Spirit just comes shining through, from that place of openness. That's like the prayer of the heart. And, and even the questions about changing the script or changing the form, you know, that they, they imply that, that there is some kind of power or authority or control where there really isn't. Um, there's one part in the Course where Jesus says, uh, you have no control over the world you made. He says mm -hmm. back near the rules for decision. And once you start to open to that, you have no control over the world you made, it's a very healing idea. Mm -hmm. Think how practical that idea is in terms of your peace of mind. If you have no control over the world you made, then you would quit trying to invest into changing the world. Making a better world, making a better body, making a better spiritual community, 
you know, making it better anything. You know, the peace of mind starts to come from, from recognizing that you don't have control over the script. But you could say you do have control in one sense over your state of mind. You can actually actively choose to be peaceful. And that's where the, the focus comes in. So, um, if people are to see um, healers like uh, John of God or just other people that seem to go and have these symptoms and have these miraculous healings, is it more that the fact not so much John of God, but the fact they've had a change in, in perception, that they've changed their mind? Yeah, Jesus talks about that in the, in the teacher's manual where he says, he's talking about the one who believes they're sick. He says, basically, they could merely rise up and say, I have no need for this at all. It's totally a decision in mind. Mm -hmm. if, and he even says, even upon, on point of death, you know, many have, have arise, have risen up to teach this, even at the point of death. So it doesn't matter how far along it seems to be, how progressively along it is, that it's always a decision of mind. You can just, you could simply rise up and say, I have no need for this at all. Almost like if you were playing a game, like children, you know, play with toys and everything, and it starts to get really intense, and the toys are fighting, and there's this big battle going on, and, you know, like sometimes when you, you get a kid, you get G.I. Joe, and you buy, okay, I got four tanks, and I got armored cars, and you fight your buddies over, and you get this big battle going. At any point, you can just stop. Mom goes, time to eat! Okay, just, leave <laughs> you know, just go get some Kool-Aid and some chips and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and the war stops. No, just, it's just the war has just dropped for the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know. And, and really, in one sense, that's kind of how Jesus is saying, is you can do that with your mind too. You know, you can just, you can just say goodbye to the war any instant that you want to. Just one little last piece. So, someone like John, John of God, who is this perceived healer, what, what would his part be in that? Then is he holding that, like that? I don't see you as ill at all. Like I'm just curious, like what his mm. part would be when all these people go to see this, this healer that is supposed to have healed thousands upon thousands of people from all kinds of things. Is it because he is so clear and I don't see you as sick and then they join minds like what's his part in, in that well first of all we have to say that that healing the body is an is an oxymoron it is an absolute contradiction of terms and the deeper you go on the spiritual journey you the first recognition you have to have is the absurdity of healing the body you know and it's this is very deep but of course this is where we're going for enlightenment mm -hmm. you know Healing is of the mind. What does that mean, healing is of the mind? In other words, healing is not of body. To have, you know, you actually have to come to a recognition that a sick body and a well body are actually the same. Why are they the same? Why is a sick body? Because they're both illusions. Because God didn't create either one. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like... Um, you know, people, when they talk about temptations, they say, well, there's good temptations and bad temptations. Wait a minute, did Jesus say that? Did Je is there any point in the Gospels where Jesus says, okay, let me tell you, you've got the good temptations over here and here's the bad temptations. He defines temptation in, in A Course in Miracles. He says, what is temptation but the wish to make illusions real? You see how firm and crisp and there's no good relationships and bad relationships. There's no good sicknesses and bad sicknesses. And there's certainly no good illusions and bad illusions. In fact, I had a, a friend of mine who used to travel with me years ago. And uh, years later, she was traveling with another partner. And they, while they were traveling, they, somebody said, what kind of relationship do you have? Is your relationship a, a special relationship or a holy relationship? And they said, no, it's a spoly relationship. <laughs> and I just shook my head and I pissed, pissed, pissed. I mean, it's like, 
the last thing you want to do <laughs> is start to invent <laughs> Jesus will not spend nine chapters, nine chapters out of 31, to distinguish the difference between the two, only to have you come along and invent spoly relationships. You know, I just, just shook my head when I said, oh man, this is, not, this is not the teaching you want to be sharing. And, and people will share, that they shared it at workshop after workshop, because it was funny. People laughed, and it's like, but this is, we're not trying, this isn't a c comedy tour. We're, we're talking about waking up, and, and there's a great distinction between special relationship and holy relationship based on the purpose. The ego sponsors special relationships, and the Holy Spirit sponsors holy relationship, and there's a big difference. Never the twain shall meet, you know, between ego and spirit. So in answer to your question, you know, that... It seems like there could be thousands and millions of spiritual seekers that are like trying to figure out this thing about about healing and removing of symptoms and who's a true healer and do I have to go to Brazil or can I can it be a remote healing you know can I do it in a bathtub or do I have to go down to Brazil you know this just goes on and on and on and on but the, the real question has to arise is like who's willing to question this idea of of sick bodies. <laughs>